nights that I get oh, to nice. go to a place.
32. Um, this is the De December 20th, 2022, Board of Water Works Trustees meeting. Um, we have on a consent agenda uh, minutes for the November 22nd, 2022, Board of Water Works Trustees meeting, minutes of the December 6th, 2022, Planning Committee meeting, minutes of the December 13th, 2022, Special Board meeting, financial statements. A list of payments for November 2022, a summary of CEO approved expenditures in excess of $20,000 and scheduling the next meeting date for January 24th, 2023. Is there a motion to move the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. And a motion and a second. Any comments or questions or items you need to discuss, Ted? No, nothing to pull out there, Graham, unless someone has a question. Questions from the board? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed to so the motion passes. Uh, it's open for public comment. I don't see anybody here speaking to the public. Um, but Ted, I'll give you an opportunity to give us a regional governance update. Quick update there today, Graham. Following the, the special meeting last week, we finished up the, the draft agreement adding all the comments that we received from the other communities who reviewed the document and we shared that uh, the following day with Thursday with Urbandale and West Des Moines with the request that they pass that on to the town council. Uh, we know they received it. We have a meeting with them on Thursday, which we just switched to virtually uh -huh. to uh, get some initial thoughts. We look forward to that and that's what we're any questions about our regional governments or next steps? Seeing that, we'll move into action items. Uh, item 3A is the to request authorization to reimburse the city of Des Moines for water main relocations for the Hamilton Drain Storm Sewer Improvements Phase 3. I'll have you explain this, Ted. Graham, this is a city of Des Moines project. They're doing some storm sewer improvements. There's a map on the next page that shows um, there's a, a significant extent here to the work that the city is going to do. And there are a number of alterations and whatnot that need to be completed as part of that uh, project, alterations to the water distribution system. Uh, we've actually included those in the city's contract based on the unit prices bid for that. Uh, we will be looking to reimburse the, the city approximately $577,000. That work is done and we're looking at the permission of the board to uh, do that reimbursement. I'm seeing the motion to authorize staff to reimburse the city of Des Moines for water main relocations included in the Hamilton Drain Storm Water Improvements Phase 3 project. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Second. Any comments or questions? Ted, while I'm thinking about it, just remind the board we discussed this a year or two ago, but where we are with the city when it comes to all of their planning, their sales tax. They, they did provide us some money, but give us just a brief update of what's going to happen in 2023. Absolutely. Um, we've talked a, a number of times. We actually have two of these reimbursements yep. um, on, on the agenda today. We oftentimes work with the city to uh, alter, relocate, replace water mains on their projects. Um, not necessarily always the, the top priority main that we would replace, but while they're there, especially for the street pavement, it's the right time. Um, they have been doing a lot of street repavement, uh, partially because they had the local option sales tax money, um, partially because they got smart money and some infrastructure money. Um, and we were frankly having a little bit of a challenge keeping up with them. And we did approach the city about that, and they chose to dedicate $2 million, their ARPA funds, to replacing water mains on city of Des projects and so this does not happen to be one of those michael correct me if i'm wrong there this doesn't happen to be one of those but we have identified um, streets projects city projects where uh, in 2023 about a million and a half of those dollars will um, be used to do some of the water main work on city projects and then the other half will be the following year they have uh, allocated about two million dollars of their funding to when water works for water main replacement on their projects. Nice. And we have a good idea. I mean, they're sharing those where their their projects are. Uh, we we absolutely have a good idea. Um, we meet with them regularly. Um, they, they have plans. Sometimes the plans change, but I would say that yes, we do have a good idea. We have regular 
interactions with them to kind of keep up the speed on that. Great. All right. So we have a motion, a second. Any other comments or questions on this item? Okay. okay. Uh, all right, so this is item 3A. All in favor, say aye. 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 Great. And uh, which moves us to item 3B. Item 3B is to rest, request authorization to reimburse the city of Gwen for water main relocation from McKinley Avenue, reconstruction from South Union Street to Southwest 9th Street. Graham, this is um, similar but different. The last, the, for item A, was a storm sewer project that was impacting some existing water mains. This is actually on McKinley, they are going to um, reconstruct the, the entire street and pave there from Southwest 9th East to Union. We are going to replace water main in that street in conjunction with, with that uh, road surface reconstruction. Um, here again, the, the city is, we provided plan specifications. The city's already bid this based on the unit prices received. Uh, we are looking to replace or reimburse the city about $812,000 once that work is done. And we're looking for permission for to do that reimbursement. So, this is a motion to authorize staff to reimburse the city of Point for water main relocations included in the McKinley Avenue reconstruction from South Union Street to Southwest 9th Street. Project. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And we get a second. Second. And a second. Any comments or questions on item 3B? Hearing none, all in favor? Say aye. 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 And so aye. The aye. I throw up my throw up my cadence, which we're putting on. Yeah. Item 3C is to request authorization for CEO and general manager to execute an agreement for professional services for Sailorville Water Treatment Plant Capacity Expansion Design and Construction Services. Okay. Graham, this is a, a kind of a milestone project for us. We've, we've talked about expanding capacity in the metro for a long time. We've talked about it kind of throughout the regional governance discussions. The board will recall that our 2017 long range plan uh, recommended a number of improvements to ensure that we were able to um, meet the growing demand in the metro area, um, expanding Sailorville, adding capacity in that area of the system was, was one of those recommendations. 2021, the update of the long range plan reinforced the need for that expansion. And so in 2022, we had um, a, a preliminary engineering report done to evaluate whether we should expand Sailorville by 10 million gallons per day or build basically an adjacent facility that would provide 25 million gallons per day. The recommendation that came out of that preliminary engineering was that we should first expand Sailorville, the existing plant by 10 million gallons per day and look um, at future steps as that expansion was taking place. Um, Proposals for that, for design of that 10 MGE expansion were requested recently and we received one proposal. Uh, that one proposal was received from the firm that did the preliminary engineering. Um, we did reach out to other firms and, and asked, it made them aware that we were seeking proposals. In fact, asked why they didn't submit proposals. And typically the answer was, they had a lot of work on their plate. It's going to be hard for them to compete with a firm that had already done the preliminary engineering and was so familiar. Um, so we took the one proposal uh, and the staff reviewed that proposal. The proposal was received from HDR Black and Beach, which, as I said, is the same team that did the preliminary engineering uh, earlier in the year. Uh, the proposal was reviewed not only by staff here at Moines Waterworks, but also by members of the newly formed technical committee uh, related to Central Iowa Waterworks. So representatives from that committee had the opportunity to take a look at the proposals at the same at the proposal at the same time the staff reviewed it. <clears throat> staff and technical committee members agreed that the team is, is clearly qualified to work in numerous projects uh, of a similar nature. Um, they were satisfied with the project approach, the schedule, and they believe 
that the proposed professional services fees were in line with what would be typical in the industry for a project this size or around 90% of the construction cost. Uh, based on that review, um, staff um, is recommending that the board authorize execution of a public professional services agreement with HDR Black and Beach for design of the 10 MGB expansion at the Sailor Hill Water Treatment. So item three C, I'm seeking a motion to authorize the CEO and general manager to execute a professional service agreement with HDR and Black and Beach in the amount of twelve million nine hundred ninety nine thousand fifty seven dollars for design and construction services for the SWTP capacity expansion project contingent upon negotiation of terms and conditions that are acceptable to staff and subsequently reviewed by legal counsel. Is there a motion to that effect? So, and a second. I'll second. second. Andrew. And any comments or questions on item 3C? I have a couple of questions. Please. I think you answered it, but I mean, usually we get some kind of estimate on what the staff thinks it will cost. And this was a, sounded like it was done later, which was, well, we think that that percentage is within industries. Right. For public improvements, we always have a, you know, we do go through the normal bidding process. We have an engineer's estimate and we compare that to the, the bids that we get. Um, that's, I don't know that that would typically be the path for professional services agreements, Mike. Uh, I'm just trying to recall, they had estimated engineering fees and the preliminary engineering report. Um, I mean, not getting your direct question. Do we typically bring an estimate of PSAs to the memo? Question. Well, <clears throat> right. Um, I would say professional services agreements typically aren't the request permission to issue the RFP, and then there isn't that two step process right. typically. But in this case, uh, part of the review was evaluating the the proposed fee, and it is a not to exceed, but part of the, pro the, the review was to evaluate that fee compared to what the industry would say, yeah. uh, compared to what they estimated in the very engineering. I mean, I ask because, I mean, typically you put things out for bid to get an idea of, of what the industry norm is or what the industry is thinking about. Um, but we don't have that here. So. We don't have a, a series of proposals with, with varying costs. That's true. But we have what we would consider to be the norm for a project of this size. That's what we have. So um, I also had a question about the technical committee because um, I wasn't aware that it had been. Um, Assembled. Who's leading that? How's that put together? The, um, as you know, the the board doesn't exist. We haven't signed yeah. the agreement. We haven't uh, seated the board, and so um, technically speaking, the technical committee does not exist because <laughs> Central Iowa Waterworks does not exist. But what we did in anticipation of a number of projects that. We knew the regional partners would have interest in. Frankly, we were interested in their input and feedback. What we did was um, we sent out um, a request to each of the prospective members of Central Iowa Waterworks, and we offered them the opportunity to um, nominate, appoint a member on an ad hoc technical committee that we were going to put together. And we offered them the opportunity to come to meetings, see these proposals, be a part of the review, ask questions. Kyle Danley um, is leading that technical committee. He has led the first three meetings that the technical committee has had. Um, very good participation in the communities who were interested. Um, a high level of, of interest in what we're doing and what we're planning to do. Good feedback, frankly. Um, and I think the, the memo 
notes that, that six of the members of the technical advisory committee, six out of how many, Kyle, I don't know exactly about how, six of them specifically said, yeah, we reviewed it. We think this is good, we recommend it. No one dissented, but some just refrained from off the head. So it's an ad hoc committee that we're trying to get going uh, to mirror what we hope we will do in the future. Uh, it's technically not an actual committee. I understand. Um, so typically, who are you getting to participate? Is it city engineers? Is it public, public works public directors, works? I would say. Kyle, do you have a mix <clears throat> of? Uh, folks that are there, but it's uh, some of the operators, some of the public works directors that are uh, had additional people sit in on one or two things. And they had more than one person sit in, topic of great interest to them. So I think the dialogue and conversations are very positive with getting feedback and also walking them through this process so that they understand where we're at, what this is moving forward. They're all supportive of that. A couple of examples, correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but I believe in Urbandale Waters case, Dale Atchison has been sitting in, he's the general manager. In the case of the city of Clive, Jeff May, who's the public works director. Um, Joaquin Rudy has been there. Um, so it, it's typically public works directors. I think it's a great education opportunity. Um, I wanted to ask also, as we proceed with this, um, that's a, it's a chunk of money that we're, we're really starting to spend money now, um, where we are on the um, participation, the community participation. We have every belief that those 10 um, will be spoken for. The 10 MGD? We, we believe that the 10 MGD will be spoken to. Uh, but you, you raise a great point, Diane. Central Iowa Waterworks does not yet exist. And we are moving forward with this process because we believe we have to do that to get the capacity in place and time to meet the growing demand here in the Des Moines metro area. Uh, worst case scenario, Central Iowa Waterworks doesn't happen. And we are... Um, left in a position where um, we, as the primary provider of drinking water in the metro, uh, have uh, entered into a contract with HDR Black and Beach to do this design. We will have an SRF loan. That's the proposed path. It's a zero interest loan for three years. So we don't have to make any payments on it in the first three years, and then it gets rolled into the construction. We have every reason to believe that by then we will know. Participate. We will know that Central Iowa Waterworks is in place. We will know um, who's participating. Um, the majority of the communities have indicated to us that, that they want the capacity that they've been allocated in this expansion. We, we uh, can allocate the 10 MGD to the participants who have indicated interest. If that all falls through, um, our fallback position is to go to those same entities Say, so, okay, we're going to sell this as purchase capacity. We're going to use the same process we've used in the past. How much do you want? We have reason to believe that we will be able to sell that capacity. They, they are all growing, they have to have the capacity. Um, is there a one chance in a million that there will be an unexpected? left turn, well, of course, there's always that chance, but that's not what we expect. And I personally believe that the risk of that happening is outweighed by the risk of not having the water leak five years from now. We, we've delayed for two years, and I would encourage the board to, to move this forward so that we can stay on the track. You know, Ted, and there have been so many meetings, but I do remember early on the board and Kyle, thank you for keeping the group going. I do remember us saying, you know, let's be totally transparent. We need to be planning. We need to be moving ahead uh, to plan for the region. So 
I don't know if that was in a committee meeting or when, but I, I appreciate this coming forward because now we know those meetings have happened and that there is good solid input and we're going with good faith effort that everyone's going to come together. And so um, yeah, it's a big chunk of money, but we cannot stop planning. That's just, these are more for my own benefit. Than, um, in the process of selecting this expansion, what sort of alternatives were also considered and how were those weighed against cost versus service quality? I don't know, all, still learning all the parameters. You're asking sure. the right question. Yeah, that's a great question. And in the long range plan that we had done in 2017, and we had it updated again in 2021, there were any number of projects right? as um, needed. I, I think the memo says there were a hundred projects were identified that we through the next years or whatever the plan was. Um, expansion at Sailorville was identified as the likely first step in the long range. <clears throat> and expansion is, is always tends to be more cost effective than building from scratch. That facility was built with um, expansion of mine. There were some facilities, some equipment there, like the generators and transmission, and some other things that are going to support this additional capacity. Um, so, expanding one of the two existing treatment plants, either Sailor Road or Mullen, was um, identified as, as the next step in expanding capacity in the region. The long range plan was. Uh, we looked at that from a, a water availability perspective. We believe that the, the water from future growth from the metro is on the Des Moines River rather than the Raccoon, partially because the Des Moines is a larger river, partially because Sailor Bill is there and it provides some kind of storage. <clears throat> and so we made the decision that we would look at uh, expanding Sailor Bill as the first step. Uh, we, we specifically made the choice to have them look at two options. 10 MGD expansion of the existing plant or 25 MGD sort of standalone plant in the, in the general area adjacent to, to give us two options. You might think that expanding by 20, uh, building 25 million gallons per day all at once would be more cost effective per unit per gallon. Um, and so we wanted to be sure, but as it turned out, because of a lot of factors, including the facilities that were already there to support the larger plan, because there's likely groundwater available to support 10 MGD expansion and likely not groundwater to support a 25 MGD plan. So we're gonna have to use surface water, which is more complicated. For a number of reasons, um, the, the recommendation that came back was um, we should do the 10 MGD expansion first. And then while we're building that expansion, make plans for what are we gonna do? <laughs> We had a dollar cost per million gallons for that for this project, which was about 15 million, 15 dollars a gallon. We're close, we're close, 15, 16. Um, the 25 MGD expansion was more. West Des Moines had done some preliminary work uh, on a western plant, and they were seeing costs that made them comfortable with it. Moving forward with expansion to Sailorville was the best first step. So. Uh, that's the kind of cost analysis we did with those options. Um, when the prices came in, we were a little surprised, frankly, that we were looking at $15, $16 a gallon. And so we asked the consultants to do pretty extensive um, comparables on recently constructed plans, um, comparable technologies to make sure that that was really the price that we were going to pay. Um, they did a lot of that work and were able to satisfy our team, the regional team, that that's what it's going to cost. That's the most cost-effective first step. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's uh, very helpful. <clears throat> um, and then just also comes to mind, uh, for forecasting future demand growth, is that something that Logic Works maintains to forecast, or is it roll up the future? municipalities? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the, the demand forecasting that we do has two or three 
basic components. One is population. What is the population going to be? Um, number two is what is the you know average daily use of each person going to be? And there's there, there's a lot of historic information. There's a lot of, of uh, a lot of work done around you know, what's the average per capita usage going to be in the West, United States, you know, those kind of things. We have that. Plus, we have our own experience. And then what is the um, peak to average ratio? And that's really driven by um, how the water use, irrigation, things like that. So we look at um, population. We ask um, the the groups that are participating in this to help us project their population. Um, we did some work in trying to ensure that everybody wasn't assuming that all the growth in the metro was going to happen in their community. So we looked the number. We looked at things like MPO and their population projections that are more global. Um, so that's the first step is trying to identify what what the population is going to be of the metro over time. Then we did a lot of work on the at the per capita usage, the daily usage person um, and then take that number and we escalate that based on what we expect the peaking factors related to how much they irrigate various communities their policies and what the race structures are trying to get that um, average day and maximum day through time for the next three twenty forty long range plan so all of that is done they redid it um, at Five years later in 2022, 2021, actually, we redid it again. Consider sort of all those things population, average use, peaking factor. Just continue to kind of try to hone in on what the expected demand is. And all the participants have some skin in the game because they're going to have to pay the capacity that they say they're going to need. So they want to have enough, but there's um, some restraint there because they don't want to pay for twice what they need to burden their smaller number of customers. So it's, it's not a perfect science, but it's a science. I think that raises something that, I mean, we've talked about it before, and I'm comfortable doing the TAN, but I mean, this is relatively much, much more expensive than we've historically seen. So, I mean, the concern comes that you roll that into rates and then people will start doing efficiency kinds of things. They'll cut their P. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're good with the 10, but I think that we really need to be proactive on those measures to try to manage demand mm -hmm. into the future. So, you know, we just can't keep adding capacity at these kinds of costs because you're going to run into we're going to take it into their own hands and then you're going to sit there with some stranded investment so and there's an affordability question on the other end of that too yeah Diana know if you were looking at more closely 2023 expanding for growth the growing population you have been here for decades and you have to be sensitive to impact that this growth um, on the <laughs> no, I think that just helps provide some historical context and frame of reference for us. Anybody else on item 3C? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Opposition item 3C passes and moves us to 3D request authorization for CEO and general manager to execute agreement for professional services. For 2023 aquifer storage and recovery well design and construction services. Okay. Graham, this is a little bit different. I just want to make sure the board has awareness of the fact that this is this is not going to be a regional facility. This is a facility that will uh, be uh, a Des Moines Waterworks facility that we will use to help uh, meet our peak demand. Uh, we will also pay for ourselves as opposed to it being a, a regional expense. Now, aquifer storage and recovery technology is a technology that we've been using here in the Des Moines area for probably 25 years. Um, store treated drinking water underground for later recovery of new peak storage and grass water quality issues. We have three aquifer storage and recovery wells 
of our own and, and the long range plan that I referenced before um, contemplated a, a, a small number of additional ASR wells in, um, in, in the system, a couple of which would be Moine, a couple of which would be in suburban communities. This one will be a Des Moines Waterworks facility. Um, we think that the time is right here now to move forward with construction of one additional well. Um, staff prepared a request for proposals for the design work associated with constructing this new aquifer and still aquifer storage and recovery well. We did receive four proposals for doing those design services. Staff reviewed those proposals uh, based on the criteria that was in listed in the RFP, which included um, firm experience, project approach, schedule, and fees. Fees ranged between $770,000 and $1.1 million for that design service. Based on their review, staff believes that uh, the proposal or the contract should be awarded to Strand Associates based on their experience with designing a number of ASR wells <clears throat> here in the metro area, successfully completing those projects <clears throat> and uh, professional service fee, just over $900,000. So we recommend that the board authorize execution of a professional service agreement the Strand Associates for their design of this ASR facility. So I'm seeking a motion to authorize the CEO and general manager to execute a professional services agreement with Strand Associates Incorporated for the 2023 aquifer storage and recovery well design and construction services contingent upon negotiation of terms and conditions that are acceptable to staff and subsequent review by legal counsel. Is there a motion to that effect? Second. Second. Any comments or questions on that 3D? So what is... What do we anticipate to be the total cost on the ASR? Uh, around nine million. So at this point, the right amount of the total somewhere. And we've got some we've created this out in a better future. But there's some construction services in here that probably alter these percentages a little bit. So um, yeah, around nine million. And I had one other question, and that is, I mean, this is going to be our facility. Were we to go forward with Central Iowa um, with regionalization, will the region have some ASRs? And how will you determine whether or not individual communities have ASRs or whether it's a regional facility? Yeah. Let's talk about the existing ASR facilities first. The three existing ASR facilities that we have in the Des Moines system were, were paid for with purchase capacity dollars, <laughs> which makes those regional facilities. And so they are part of the regional um, supply system and they're not um, facilities that anyone, including Des Moines Water, which will be using to reduce their individual peaks uh, in terms of the load that they put on the system. The city of Ankeny has two of their own ASR wells that they pay for that are within their system, and they use those ASR wells to manage their peak. So those are the existing wells, and those are kind of the different, that's kind of the difference between the, you know, the five that exist today um, the city of Waukee is working on one right now. West Des Moines and Urbandale are considering those, but they haven't done it yet. So going forward, <clears throat> the region could decide that it wanted to build ASR wells to just help with the overall peak capacity of the system. Individual communities can decide that they want to construct an ASR well to manage their own peaks. So um, there is... Um, benefit to uh, reducing the peak load that a community puts on the system because there's going to be a cost associated with that peak load based on the rate structure that you essentially agreed to for regional governance. So 
Um, frankly, ASR wells are pretty popular now because of that. Popular enough that we felt it necessary to um, put verbiage in the agreement to say, we have to manage the number of these wells and the total capacity and how much water we're gonna have to produce to fill them up in the winter time. <clears throat> We've added that to the agreement. That's one of the things that's in the second draft that wasn't in the first draft. So this is a this is a facility that we believe will, will benefit um, point and our customers, regardless of whether we are a regional entity or not. But if we are a regional entity, this facility will be one asset that will help reduce the peak load that we place on the wall system as the Does that answer your question? I think so. I'm just wondering going forward, you know, should we regionalize somebody who doesn't have well, could the region then say no, you you don't get to go forward as a as a individual entity? We'll need to go forward as a I don't think that the region would be likely to say you can't do it yourself we're going to do it as a region I think the region may be very likely to say we can't have any more ASR wells right now because we don't know we build water. more capacity in the overall system there's a limit to how much ASR capacity you can use effectively and you can't have your peak day be half ASR capacity because there's no way to fill it up can't have it be a third you know I think we're thinking smaller total so I don't think that it would be a question of you can't do it because we're going to I think it'd be a question of we can't no one can do it because we have a treatment capacity Any other questions or comments on our 3D? Well, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed, hearing none, item 3D passes. Item 3E is the selection of a contract for the removal and disposal of lime residuals. Graham Des Moines Waterworks has been hauling lime residuals since the mid 1990s. <laughs> many, many years, residuals were just placed in lagoons across the river, but mid 90s, that was. Uh, that process was ended and we've been hauling lime residuals primarily for use as um, a soil additive or pH adjustment on, on ag land. Um, Senegro Central has been our lime hauling contractor since 2015, our third, I believe, lime hauling contractor in our experience with hauling lime. And their contract, the current contract as amended and extended, will end in June this year. And so uh, in October, staff issued an RFP requesting proposals for removal and disposal of lime residuals at both of our lime softening plants, that being the fluid drive plant and the McMullen plant. Um, three proposals were received. Staff has reviewed those proposals. Um, and the proposal received from Senegro uh, received the highest score in terms of the criteria that were used to judge the proposals, um, and it was also the lowest price proposal. In fact, the proposal, um, this proposal will result in an annual savings, approximately $300,000 of the hall compared to contract that we have now. So we believe it's a very positive proposal and we would recommend that the board accept Senator's proposal and authorize staff to prepare a contract. So I'm seeking a motion to accept Cinegro Central LLC's proposal and authorize staff to prepare a contract for execution. Is there a motion to that effect? In a second. Second. Motion in a second. Any comments or questions on item 3E? Is, is the cost the savings more because they're getting more money for the finished product? Really don't know what they, how much they're selling it for, or if they're sold. I can't really say. That's the case. Yeah. Let's hope. <laughs> I mean, that'd be great. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So we don't find out we have a supplier dumping the lime somewhere like we 
you know, had to deal with a few years ago? We're, we are fairly confident that they are putting the product to beneficial use. We've been monitoring that much more closely in recent years. Um, I think a little good old fashioned competition didn't occur here, frankly, but um, we don't know the exact reason. We just know that it's more cost effective than what we Any other comments or questions on item 3E? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Opposition item 3E passes. Item 3F is the performance evaluation and salary increase for CEO and general manager. Um, I'll seek a motion here, and I, I will say that um, Andrea and I met with Ted Thursday of last week, and we had a long discussion about obstacles and opportunities uh, both internally at Waterworks and externally. We talked about communications and training and safety and a whole a whole host of, uh, as I say, opportunities and, and obstacles. Uh, so we did that. Every board member had an opportunity to, to send comments to Ted to also meet with him. Um, I am open to uh, I'm not sure exactly what the motion that I need here, but um, to take a motion. If we want to, if anybody wants to have a in-depth discussion of the CEO and general manager's performance, um, because of a request by the CEO and general manager, we can go into a closed uh, session and do so. If anybody wants to have any comments, and don't go into discussion, that would be appropriate. So. What is the action that I'm seeking here? I, I would just note that the, because of the, the request to discuss the evaluation in closed session, that would go from positive and negative feedback too. So if we're going to talk about the evaluation, we should do it closed session because of the request to do so. So um, as far as action items, I mean, I think it's up to the board as far as I think there's a, a salary uh, issue perhaps or not to address the board, and that is that's within the discretion of the board. Yeah, I believe that, that the, the way that's written into the contract is that the CEO and general manager's increase matches uh, that okay. was negotiated. And, and yeah. I don't think requires any action. No, yeah, if there was any additional any action additional that the board action. was going to take on that issue, they would need to do so. That. If there was an if there was a motion, I would accept it. If there wasn't a motion, we would just move forward. Yes. So the feedback, and by the way, Doug. Thank you for sending the reminder to all of us, like you always do. I remember several years ago, it'd be like, oh my gosh, it's November, and we're supposed to do an evaluation of the CEO. So you have kept us on the straight and narrow, so thank you. Um, but has that feedback been shared with Ted, or does it just go to the chair and vice chair, just so we all know? Because that's that's all I want, is that's to make sure. Yep. Then I... Personally, as a board member, I have no problem just moving on on this. We know what the salary increase is. Feedback's been shared. Graham gave us a chance if we wanted to meet with him, we could request that. I've made sure it happened in the right time frame. Any other comments or questions on this item? Motions? Are there any motions? Had anything to say? Um, no, I don't have anything. Okay. Uh, thank you for the conversation on Thursday. Appreciate the direction. All right. So we'll move on to item 3G, and this is the election in, of the chairperson and vice chairperson for 2023 2024. We elect uh, chair and vice chair for two year terms. So I'd be seeking a motion to elect a chairperson for a two-year term beginning January 1st, 2023. Is there any, is there a motion or a nomination? Um, I would like to make the nomination of um, you know, this just happened to me. Why can't I remember Andrea's last time? <laughs> it's right up there on the screen. Oh, Andrea Bolton. Sorry, Andrea. <laughs> I'm wondering how you were. What, what it just left. You no, know, it, I wasn't. It just flew out of my head. Um, for as the chairperson for the two-year term beginning January 1, 2023. 
So we have a motion to nominate Andrea Bolton for chair for a two year term beginning January 1, 2023. Is there a second to that nomination or any other nomination? Second. Second, any other nomination? Right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> and those opposed. Hearing no opposition, Andrew Bolton is elected to chair beginning January 1st. We also need to uh, elect a vice chairman for a two year term beginning January 2023. Is there a motion with the nomination for that person? And I also would like to nominate Alec Davis. Is that your last name? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's not right. <laughs> I would like to nominate Sue Hoppert as vice chairperson. Maybe we could co do it. <laughs> he was probably I, surprised. I, I, I was a little surprised. You know, like, 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 panic. Excuse me, but Graham asked me to do this ahead of time. I couldn't remember Andrea's name. I tried to do Alex, but I would like to to um move Sue Hubbard as vice chairperson for the two-year term beginning January 1st. All right, so we have a motion and nomination for Sue Hubbard as vice chair for a two-year term beginning January 1. Is there a second for that nomination? I'll second that. We have a second. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Uh, hearing, hearing none. Um, that motion passes. Graham, I had my remarks ready. That's why you just threw me off going right into the motion, not giving me a chance oh, to talk. Speak. <laughs> the first thing I wanted to say is I think we all want to thank, thank Graham and Andrea for their leadership the last couple of years. And I will say for Alan's benefit that we pass this around and it's not just an an honorary title to be the chair or the vice chair. There's There really is actual work that goes with that, a lot of work. Um, they spend a lot of more, they're in more communication with Ted. There's a lot of things that go to the chair and the vice chair that the rest of the board necessarily don't hear about. There are meetings that the chair and the vice chair take on behalf of the board, um, often, like with the city council, um, with other um, metro leaders that requires their time. Um, I'm pleased to say that this is a board that, you know, you'll hear about other boards that had the same chair for years and years and years. We pass it around. And I know that's what the bylaws say, but I think the bylaws were written in accordance with with the board wishes um, because it really gives everybody an opportunity to do that job and to learn more about day-to-day -day things that happen here at Waterworks. I think it makes us a, a much, much stronger board in that um, we do move our leadership every two years. So um, I look forward to Andrea and Alec, your turn will come. It just won't be there <laughs> in two years. So I'm I'm real pleased. Um, as I said, Graham, we we appreciate the role that you've played on regionalization. We really appreciate also your focus on education um, that you have um, really taken the leadership role on the last couple of years, and we don't lose you. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I'd like to also add, I don't think there's probably been a two-year period of time, Graham, that it was more important to have strong leadership um, as we prepare for Central Iowa Rural <clears throat> Drinking Water. Um, and you have challenged us at times. You have uh, encouraged us at times. You have looked for different ways to do things. Um, but through all that, communication has been very clear with the entire board. Uh, you are open to new thoughts and ideas, and I hope that you stay very involved as we move into the Central Iowa Rural Drinking Group, because I think um, you've seen us go through every possible discussion option, and now we're in a very good place. So, and Andrea as well, I know you were in on so many of those meetings, and 
you're stepping into this uh, well prepared to assume the lead. And as we told Andrea, we met for iced tea one afternoon and I said, you know, lean on all of this. I mean, I think you're right, Diane. We do have a small board and we do try to, as things happen to people, I mean, we can step in and we can go to committee meetings for other people. So yeah, get ready, Alec, here. <laughs> you're next. But Graham, thank you so much for your leadership. Look for kind words, and I appreciate it. I mean, I, I, uh, I was telling Bill Pudwan and our other union representatives the other day how much I enjoy serving on this board, and I think we all uh, get that this is great community service. It's worthwhile. It's a well-run organization, and it's an honor to be a part of it. Uh, I have said for a long time that. The clock was ticking on how long I was going to stay on this board, and that clock is still ticking now. I I feel strongly about continuing forward with regionalization, and uh, I'm willing to stay as we as we move forward on that because I think it's it's so important that we have of uh, our focus remains and we do this the right way. I have every plan uh, to. Sign my seat before my terms up. I don't exactly what my terms up. I think I've got five more years, but I don't think I'll see five more years on this board. And I, I do that for a couple of reasons. One, personally, but also I do think it's important to bring new ideas on the board. And I think we see that with Andrea. I mean, Andrea joined this board and brought, you know, fresh uh, ideas, vigor, uh, and focus um, on this that has been a breath of fresh air. Alec is doing the same thing you just started but I think uh that type of thing and so I know with Andrea as chair uh things we're in good hands mm -hmm. uh and the other thing and, and to, to echo what Diane said that I could complain about this board being a little too small I mean there's a lot of work for five people to do and I would like to see a, a larger board but the nice thing about the way that we operate this board we do hand off the chairmanship and we do uh, no one has too much power. We all have to do the job because we are a small group and it works and it works remarkably well. Um, as I shared with with Ted um, when we met last week, and I guess I share with Ted every time we talk, but uh, you know the challenges that we have, not only with regionalization, but looking at our workforce, looking at safety, looking at employee relations. Um, there are a lot of obstacles and opportunities that we have to address, and I'm confident we can. Um, but we're 2023 is going to be um, a trying year in many ways as we get our you know our, our arms around some of these things. And uh, I know this new reception task and our staff is, and, and as uh, as I mentioned to Bill and the, the union team the other day. Their job is um, integral to the success of this organization, and we need to preserve and enhance that relationship with the union going forward. As we as we do this, we can we can, we only are better if we do this together. So again, it's it's an honor to be on this board. It's been an honor to serve as chair. I think I've I've been on this board for twelve years. I think I've served for about half that time in the chair's role, which. Uh, is, is a lot, but it's not have to do so. I appreciate your support. All right. So with that being said, um, those are our action items. We have board committee reports, planning committee. There was a meeting, correct? Yes. There, there was. Um, before I before I do those notes, <clears throat> um, I. I I uh, just wanted to also um, thank all of the board as we move into next year and and my term. I, I so appreciate the accessibility of this board and all of its members um, to, um, you know, to be that uh, that full force of of, you know, uh, brain power to figure out how we how we solve um challenges and how we find creative ways over obstacles i don't think any single um person on the board is is able to do um you know this work alone but with our collective uh, resources and experience and skill sets 
Um, it's it's pretty amazing um, how well this board um, operates. Um, and with that, um, thinking about the the planning um, committee, we had a very um, a very a interesting discussion uh, regarding some of the things that we were talking about and and moving on. Um, earlier in our meeting regarding you know the RFP process and bidding and how we work with contracts and um, um, proposals moving forward. Um, uh, I've after that meeting there was so much discussion I know that so many of our board members have been asking you know are, is there a better way to do this in, um, you know to um, get bids to um line up contracts can we do multi-year contracts that i really wanted to make sure that everybody got this information um so i was the meeting i don't know if i saw that the meeting uh slides were sent out but we also discussed the opportunity to talk about um uh, this these topics in the finance committee help me if i'm remembering incorrectly ted <clears throat> Michelle, remind me, did, did those go out or did they, the slides? The slides, no. Um, the video. Video. Has been posted to YouTube and is available through the link on our website as well. Why don't, why don't we um, board the slides and the link to the board so that they'll, they'll have those? Because I do think that, that was an excellent presentation that we saw. See, get that take care of career. Right. I mean, that would be great. We, we know we, we talked about the RFP bid process, consultant selection, and really streamlining some things to um, minimize the work, make ourselves more available for more contractors, creating this, um, um, you know, indefinite scope on call service. And I just really think it would benefit for more of the board to, to see that conversation or to see that conversation in those slides um yeah and if there's any other discussions from there did i miss anything is there anything you'd like to add ted no andrea i think that that covers it i do think it would be um, useful for the board to see that presentation because it's um I can answer some of the questions we had today about why we just get one proposal on our design for Sailorville and, <clears throat> and, and answer some of the questions the board has asked us about how, how can we do better in terms of getting more bidders on our projects, getting better prices, getting better timelines. And so uh, I think you covered it very well, Andrew. All right. So moving on to the Finance and Audit Committee, Diane. Shared that meeting, I believe. Well, we didn't have that meeting. Yeah, oh, that's, 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 that's right. That's right. correct. So we're there to make it up. Um, all right. So then moving on, the Stowe Foundation. I do think um had some good things happen um in thinking about our outdoor classroom, Ted. So I'll leave it to you. But if there's time either in the January or February meeting, I think it'd be appropriate for to bring an update on where we are. Okay. It's not really time sensitive, just whatever meeting that fits into that. Um, you probably be time. Um, Graded Wine Botanical Garden also don't have much to, to report there. Things continue to move pretty well. The only thing I know that is, well, there are two things that are that I passed off to Ted. One, the, the garden is anticipating expanding into the seven acres uh, directly to the north. Uh, and as they contemplate that, they you know their water needs are going to increase. And so they've asked for Warren Waterworks to help them put together some estimates about what that cost would be and what's, that's going to require. Um, and then we may see a, an amendment to our agreement with the Botanical Garden uh, in the fact that when our uh, financial assistance agreement runs out, I believe in four years, that um, that would terminate that agreement and we may no longer uh we need to adjust, we need to amend the agreement so that we no longer appoint a member to their board uh but that's a minor amendment right i would also point out graham that the, the water education 
fourth quarter update from the botanical garden. You'll recall that our extension agreement with them was very specific about some educational um, initiatives that we wanted them to include in their programming. The update is included in the board packet. We do have a <clears throat> the meeting scheduled with staff in addition to I have with Kim to talk about water. We have a, uh, a meeting scheduled with the staff to talk about this and ensure that we're going to get the program that we asked for. We're heading in the right direction, but we need to make sure that we get everything that we're hoping for in terms of educational program. And I'll just echo on that too that um, uh, the work that's been done to kind of create that educational program. Water as a focus of the botanical garden is really going to be a nice start as the Stowe Foundation, we hear about this in January or February, thinks about the outdoor classroom here. It's the hope of the Stowe Foundation and Waterworks that we build on that water education that's happening in the botanical garden, work to bring in new partners uh, at the science centers and, uh, and others so that there's uh, a connection to each one of these curriculum if you will. So if you're at the park here, there's a handoff to the botanical park and there's a handoff to the to the science center. If we do our job right and strengthen the work that started um, thanks to Jen Terry and others at the botanical garden, uh, we're really building something positive. So all right, uh Des Moines Waterworks Park Foundation. Uh, Andrea or Mike, maybe so, um I so I was unable to attend the the meeting last Friday. It conflicted with my uh, my own board meeting, but just calling some um, items out from our notes. I think one thing to touch on is that um, the Park Foundation did receive a draft of the contract for that um, debt repayment from the city that they are reviewing now and, and continue to try to button up those negotiations. Um, and just that they're continuing to put together, you know, a uh, structure for sponsorships and funding to roll them in, into, sorry, sponsorships, funding, but also their their revenue streams of concerts for next year to set them up for, to be in a good place in 2023. Um, but I will defer to Mike if he had um, any other interesting tidbits from the, uh, the, the meeting last Friday. I think you had the two I had, the 2080, and then just the focus on working with the promoter and the event managers to have a successful operating year out there. They get to see the normal year. Uh, things are lining up to hopefully be not what they always envisioned, what we always envisioned. Um, the last thing they did was they had a nice little PowerPoint presentation of just all the events of 2022. So I think I might have pushed that your way ahead. It might be worth sharing. Uh, give folks a perspective on the width and breadth of the activity on it. Kind of need to see it in one collection of slides. Do you sense any uh, obstacles to the city's 28E, or is it too early to say? No, I think I think conceptually people are aligned there. Okay. Um, there's probably the last. I think everybody's anxious to get the point that I can just sign and be done. Okay. Okay. The, the, we haven't seen it, Graham, what the city right. sent to the foundation. <laughs> we asked them to send it to the foundation. I think, exactly. Uh, we did hear that the, the city is still interested in it being an amendment to the 2018 as opposed to a standard forbearance agreement. And if that is the case, if that's the way it ends up, uh, this board is party to that 2080 agreement. And so we'd like to have to bring that to this board for approval. But again, it's it's mm -hmm. going to be important to me. I think it's important for this board that the repayment of that debt never falls on the ratepayers. So part of the reason we didn't want a part of the 2080 is we didn't want it. We didn't want to encumber that on the flavors. I don't think that's the case here. But that's one thing we're going to look at when we see the 28. And John's been involved in the process. Uh, John Landry's been involved in the process up until now. And as I said, we'll just see what happens, but I think we're going to be okay. All right. Um, CEO and general manager's comments. 
Graham, I, I want to start by highlighting, making sure the board has uh, eyes on the back of the agenda. There's our reportable injury count. Uh, I'm not highlighting it because it's a good thing. I'm highlighting it because it's a bad thing. We've had 14 reportable injuries to date, which is too many. Uh, that would be uh, more than it would be average for a uh, utility our size. It would be significantly more than we've had in recent years. It would be an area of focus um, working with staff or union leadership. We need to redouble our efforts on on a safe utility because that's just a <clears throat> it's an outlier for us, but it's a trend that we can't afford to see continue. So I want to make the board aware that we focus on that. Ted, can I ask you a question about that? Sure. There were nine of the fourteen that were sprains or strains. Tell me what that is. I mean, are they stepping <clears throat> into a a hole and pretty. What, we what we is, had at that's least so heavy. I mean, nine of the fourteen. We had at least one sprained ankle. You know, we have um, a, a torn rotator cuff or two. Um, we have sprains and strains related to overexertion and uh, hard work. And it, that's a, that's an area that we tend to see injuries in is something that we've tried to focus on in the past. Kyle, I don't know if you have more details or he or Tom, if you know, remember specifically what some of those were, but I know there was an ankle sprain in there, the rotator cuff thing. Yeah. What do you say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. To your point, Sue, though, that, that number makes it an area for focus. Right. I mean, it's so concentrated, nine in that area out of 14. Yeah, and, and there's a, a broad swath of types of things that can fall into that, but that tends to be um, where we see a lot of our injuries, and then and hearing protection is another one. Um, one or more of those were retirees. So they um, had a recordable hearing shift uh, when they were tested after they retired, which becomes a recordable injury. They hear that it happened. So it's probably cumulative over the years, but it's something we've been focusing on is hearing conservation and protection. So it's the community hearing losses is really just. We Man, man two of the strains. Yeah, yeah, in that category of injuries involving the people that were in the blue van when they got struck by another vehicle and how they were working. That's what I think we Those are, are, are difficult to, to predict and difficult to prevent, but the bottom line there is there's two things. What were we last year, Kyle? So it will be an area of focus. I just want to highlight that for the board have to create some accountability for us. Look forward that um, I just don't want to get through this without that. And before you leave there, Ted, one thing um, I'd like you to consider is this report, obviously, is an OSHA reportable injuries report. I wonder if there's a way uh, to expand this. I mean, we've had some. Um, safety incidences uh recently that people weren't hurt necessarily but uh are of concern and i know that they're of great concern to you i wonder if there's a way uh, to expand this report to include safety incidences where there wasn't an injury but you know there's something that the team is looking forward and I, I don't know exactly what i'm looking for Maybe you can work with Let us again, think about the union that. and HR and others to think about just because I, I know you want input from the board and, and, and information shared. Just think about it. Yeah, I'm saying. Let me let me think about that one piece. Okay. Um I have a couple more things. Um, if I could, Graham. The first one is listed here, the emergency um helping with all repairs. There there is um uh 
an what we would call an emergency declaration in the packet for the board's information. I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on there at LP Moon. We, we have the ASR well um, at LP Moon. The pump failed uh, towards the end of the summer, um, later in August, I believe. And uh, so that starts a process of um, pulling the pump. You have to get a contract. You have to pull that hundreds of feet of cabling and piping out. You have to evaluate <clears throat> the pump and motor to understand what happened. There's a description in there of, of what happened. Generally speaking, water got into the, the equipment, uh, caused a short, damaged the pump beyond repair. Uh, go to the manufacturer to get a replacement. They're telling us it could be 52 weeks before we can get a replacement pump. Um, all of that takes some time. That's not going to work. So what are we going to do instead? Uh, we did some evaluation of other options. Um, and very recently now here, we've come to the point where I think we've got the puzzle pieces aligned that we can find a different pump, and a different motor that are a different voltage, which will require a new transformer. Um, and at the same time, we can replace some of the, what I would call wear parts of this whole thing. You have to pull a pump periodically and replace the, the column five and do some things, um, occasionally lower the pump. We're looking at doing those things while we've got it out, while we're in, in the middle of this. But here's the bottom line is we have a game plan now, but in order to get it done in time to put this critically important pump and motor back in service before peak time this summer, we need to just move forward with that outside of normal design, bid, board uh, process. And so, <clears throat> We are bringing this to the board today to advise you that we are um, declaring this um, emergency situation. We're going to move forward with um, purchasing the, the materials and equipment that are described in this um, this memo um, post haste, so that we can get them installed and, and ready to go. So um, it's not something we like to do. Uh, we, not something we do often. Not something we do lightly. But given the, the timelines and the criticality of that particular facility to serving the western suburbs, it's something that we It's here in the back of the room. So I yeah, just wanted to see if anybody had any questions. Well, usually we get the emergency things after they've already done it. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Nathan, Kyle, others, I know have done a lot of work on this trying to figure out what are we going to do. It took time. Um, once we got it out, figured out what was wrong with it, figured out we couldn't get it replaced, it took time to figure out what we can do, and now we're just kind of in the midst of so what we're going to do. Um, I also wanted to mention that we are watching the weather. Um, most people are watching the weather because of travel considerations and, and whatnot. We are watching the weather because we're likely to have folks out. We are likely to have rain breaks because of these low temperatures. We're likely to have our crews uh, have to spend time out in this horrible weather fixing water breaks so that our customers have service. We're watching that carefully. There's also potential for operational issues that they put from wind affecting our communications to um, affecting the electrical grid, which has significant impacts on, on us. Trying to be prepared for all of that. Um, a storm like this is a big deal for us and trying to be prepared, trying to keep an eye on it, and, uh, most importantly, trying to keep people safe throughout and in it and working. Um, and the last thing I'll share is that each of you um, received a letter today um, related to fluoride and questions about the use of fluoride. Um, and we just have got those today, and so we have a letter yeah, following on. All right. Um, there's a, a contract status and professional service agreements are included in there. Uh, the schedule of, of 2023 activities are listed. Anything else for the good of the cause today before we adjourn? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Happy holidays, everyone.